Okay. Uh, Eric, so how to train uh, so that you don't hit like a ton of bricks is to hit a ton of bricks. Um, the reason that, that shots land really stout and the reason you're feeling that jarring impact back down your arm is because your entire body weight is hitting simultaneous with the force of your arm extending into it. So you're throwing a lunge here. So that punch is going out. Those muscles are pushing into it as your body weight's coming in. Um, and that puts a lot of force behind that blow. It's a bad thing to receive if all that force is at the tip of a sword. And that's, but you see that happen a lot. And it's where most of the jacking shots come from in rapier is, and on the heavy field, if I want to make sure somebody takes a shot, I make sure to get my body going forward as I throw it because that puts all of my body weight into it, right? Um, in, in rapier, you, you don't want to jack people, so you don't put your body weight into it. So how do you take your body weight out of it? Because we're lunging. We are, in fact, throwing our bodies at our opponents. Um, it is, the, the solution is the solution to everything else in rapier, hand before foot. Uh, point control, hand before foot. Keeping the line closed, hand before foot. Not hitting too hard, hand before foot. So, um, if my hand goes out before I hit, then when I hit, my arm can actually be the shock absorber. On impact, my elbow buckles. My shoulder can buckle. As my body comes forward, if they're coming forward at me, I can rotate at the hips to take all that force out. Um, the... The old common wisdom in rapier was you broke, it, broke your wrist, but if I break my wrist, that does nothing except actually lock in a lot of the muscles here, lock in, especially if, if I break it here, it locks it in against me, and that's just going to hit harder. So, if someone says break your wrist, that's actually the last thing to go. Because I can hit here, straight arm, so long as I keep that elbow relaxed, then it collapses. My wrist isn't breaking at all. Shoulder turns, body turns. Going the other way. Hit. Elbow collapses. Shoulder collapses. Body turns. Uh, that's an incorporata. It's a, how I finish a lot of big lunges I throw at people. Because it spins my body weight off that way. And it puts that shock absorber into it. Um, so yeah. The thing to practice is to get the, getting the arm out there and not locking it when it's extended. Getting them out, the arm out there, but held just short of that point of, extend, uh, of locking out so that it can be the shock absorber when your opponent lands on it. And now comes the part where you train that. You put down the sword. Come over to your pel or a brick wall. Bare-handed. This gets real uh, instructional real fast. Um, or if you're in a park, I've used tree bark, tree trunks, and you extend. Okay, I came up just a little bit short, so I'm gonna take a little bit step forward. There, down there. Nice, good, gentle touch. And I'm gonna take a half step back. That puts the body into it. Take another half step back. Notice I haven't moved my feet yet. My arm, my body, everything is going out there so that, every, so that all of these joints, all of this chain through here can, also, can then be the shock absorber. Um, I'm going to take a step back. Now I'm going to be stepping. Okay. 
Notice I'm not looking at the bag or the wall, whatever I'm punching. Make your people, when you're teaching them, or make, when, when you're doing this, and for anybody who's watching this video and teaching people, close your eyes. And I just adjusted the measure there so I can't, I, so I was actually in a place where I didn't know when the impact was gonna happen. Um, which is where this ends up. You go out till your extension just lands. Um, close your eyes, and then you step forward. Now remember, if you're doing this at a brick wall, uh, that's gonna hurt if you're locked out, right? That's gonna hurt if your arm is still coming forward as your body's coming forward and hitting here. So, um, it very quickly teaches, because it has very strong negative feedback, uh, it, it very quickly teaches that, that, you know, that shot lands and uh, you, you <laughs> if, if your arm's locked, if your form wasn't chained together perfectly, um, life sucks. <laughs> life sucks real hard at that point. Um, here, let me, so it's a punching bag. It's meant to get punched. This is my nice rough brick wall. I'm not punching it for this, for this video because somebody is actually sleeping upstairs, but same thing here. Boom. And you do that um, till they're okay with the idea of lunging at their wall with a bare fist. Then put a dagger in your hand because the dagger is going to give you more feedback than a sword. Um, but it's going to start getting your body used to doing all of this with the dagger. Or with the with something in your hand, you could actually start off with keeping the knuckles out of the way, or keeping the uh, keeping the guard out of the way, still just punching with your hand. That was a little harder than I wanted it to be. Um, then here, reach your thrust. That dagger is not going to be as flexible, so you're going to get still get the good transfer of energy uh, down the arm. You're going to get that good feedback of okay, uh, that 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 hit hard. You want it to just be. Just the lightest feedback that you can get. Um, And then you go to the sword. And then you do all of that over again. Same thing. Um, extend. Extend, extend, extend. Step back, extend. Extend, extend. Extend, lean. Extend, lean. Uh, um, Percy, the guy who, one of the guys that, that my local practice back in North Carolina, who taught me a lot of stuff, uh, started that, started practice with that every day. He would go out there and he extended the, uh, extended the telephone pole that we had. Um, so yeah, the, the way you teach how not to hit hard is to make hitting hard feel really bad. And that means, uh, you feel really bad for the person doing the hitting. So, no glove, punch wall. <laughs>